but that's like any time today. So it's not like due at a certain time. So, you know, 11.59 and 59 seconds, I suppose, is the, uh, is the actual due time. But um, we're not going to nitpick if, you, uh, if you're that close. All right. Um, last time we talked about, last week, we talked about uh, in the first class and a bit in the second class, we talked about HTML tags. And in the second class, we started talking a bit about CSS. Now, we're going to spend um, a lot of time in each of those languages. The interesting thing is, is in terms of basic concepts, what we talked about last week really is a good portion of the class, believe it or not, in terms of basic con, uh, you know, concepts. So, I think we ought to take like about 12 weeks off and, and we'll show up <laughs> sometime in April to kind of wrap the, no, 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 just kidding. What's the old saying? The devil's in the details, right? Um, yeah, we cover the basic concepts, but what you can do with HTML, what you can do with CSS, we need to work through some of those details. In a nutshell, um, HTML and CSS give us two aspects of the web page, all right? And they, they work hand in hand and they work together. And to the degree that you can keep them separate, it will greatly enhance the maintainability of your web pages. We'll wait for the document cam to start up. There we go. HTML should contain the content of the web page. In other words, the text, the images, the links, that sort of thing, and the, the headings. And I, I'll call this the logical structure. Now, right now, that might not make a lot of sense because we're really not doing a lot with the, with the structure of the page. Our page just kind of starts at the top and goes down to the bottom. But later on, when we start controlling the layout more, the logical structure of the page is important, and, and, and we'll talk about it. CSS handles everything about the appearance and what I'll call the physical layout. And again, this will become more relevant later on. For now, we'll, we'll just stress that HTML is the content, CSS is the appearance. Those of you that may have done some HTML coding might have to unlearn some habits. All right, and I'll just mention them briefly. And um, if you've never done HTML coding before, that's fine. You, there's nothing for you to unlearn then. But what we're going to avoid in this class are things like the font tag. Font tag is not good. All right, break tags, the BR tag. No, we can do better than that. Using, uh, using the color as an attribute on an HTML tag. Nah, we're not going to do that either. Now, if you've done these on your first lab, don't worry, all right, because I didn't tell you that uh, yet. Uh, but going forward, I might comment on it, and I'll say, you know, we're going to learn how to avoid that. And we're going to learn via CSS how to achieve all the things that you could do this way. All right. In a nutshell, HTML is like this. HTML consists of tags. Tags tell the browser what a particular piece of content means. That is, what is the significance of it. So we talked last time about an A tag, for example. And we could say a href equals http google.com link to Google. Um, the a tag indicates that it's a link, all right, which means that this text isn't just plain words on the page, but it's a link, all right. And when you click on that link, you'll be taken where? Well, to wherever the href says. 
The href is what we call an attribute. All right. An attribute is additional information about a tag. In other words, it's not enough to say I want a link here. You want a link to what? And in this case, we want the link to Google. So tags, all tags more or less look like this. They have a starting tag. They might have some attributes. They have an ending tag. And in this case, there's something between the start and ending tag. In other words, the text that you want to be the link. Let's look at the examples that we were looking at last time um, to see these things in action rather than on the sheet of paper. Let's see them uh, live and in color, as they say. If I can find it. This should largely be review for you. All right. If we look at the source of this, again, right mouse, open with notepad, we will notice, again, we have our basic HTML tag at the very bottom of the end HTML tag. We have the head tag that contains two things contains the title of the page, which appears again in the title bar up here, and when you minimize it, and the style. We'll get to the style later on. The body contains really what's going to, you know, the body of the web page, what appears in the window of your browser. And we have all the tags. Um, we have an A tag. We have some H2s and so on down the line. Any questions about this? The last thing we talked about last time were uh, CSS rules. And each one of these lines, I would say, is a CSS rule. All right? The CSS rules are listed. Uh, they can be listed a couple different places. We're going to start out by listing them as part of our web page. And if we're going to do that, we enclose them in a style tag. So within the head section of the page, we have a style tag that tells the browser, hey, Everything between the start, start style tag and the end style tag is to be treated as CSS code, not HTML code. Now, every one of these style rules, generally speaking, looks the same. The first part of the style rule is what's called a selector. It selects what on the page gets this rule. All right? So in this case, we said the body, and now, you know, what's the body? Well, the body is a whole web page. So the whole web page gets this rule. All right. In this particular style rule, the selector is H1, which means that only H1 tags get this rule. All right. Now, we can put any HTML tag we want to here. We can put A's, we can put, you know, uh, H1, H6 paragraphs, anything we want to, we can, we can put there. The first few examples I'm going to go over, we're, we're really going to talk about the colors because that's probably the most obvious thing to change. Right? That's, that, that'll stand out most uh, uh, of any of the kinds of changes we could make. But don't think that that's the only thing that we can change. We can change just about everything associated with the appearance. We can, for example, change the font family. We can change the font size. All right, and uh, how do you know all these things? Well, you know, it's just like phone numbers in a way. You know, what phone numbers do you know? Um, you know the phone numbers that you call the most often, right? Everything else you have to look up, all right? This might be a bad example because actually with my mobile phone now, I don't know any phone numbers, all right? Yeah, <laughs> we'll have to rewind that, huh? All right. But you kind of get the idea. Cable TV channels. There you go. You know the ones that you watch a lot. I know the food channel is channel 55 on my cable system, right? But if I wanted to look up something I don't watch as often, shopping channel, I'd have no idea and I'd have to look it up. So how do you learn these things? Well, again, 
that's one of the reasons your first assignment is to go out and find some references or resources about a page. And one of the absolute best resources for learning is W3Schools. All right. This allows you to learn HTML and CSS. And what's nice about this is unlike other pages that just have, you know, an explanation of something, it actually lets you try things and see what the results are going to be. That's what really makes this good. It's, it's an interactive tutorial. So, for example, if I looked up HTML and I wanted to see something about headings, I can go try it yourself. And it shows me the web page. You know, what happens if I make this an H2? It shows me the result. So it's a really a great resource. Now, this also has uh, materials about CSS. So if we look under CSS, we can see a list of all the things that we can do. For example, if I wanted to change the font of a page, I could go under here and select font. And I can see all the things that we can do with font. All right. So if I wanted to change the kind of lettering it had from the browser default to something else, I can go in and I can put a style rule in to say, hey, change the font to something else. So let's just do that in, in this example. Just uh, for the heck of it. All right. I'll just change the font of the H1s so it stands out. Font, family, I'll talk about why I put three of them in a minute here. I actually put the names of three fonts here. And if we look at our web page, notice the letters for the H1 now are different. Now we'll talk more about this later on. Really what I wanted to illustrate though is the fact that Really, anything about the appearance can be controlled via CSS. So, again, the colors are a nice, easy, simple one to do to start out with. That's why I picked those as an example. But as we progress through this class, we'll be changing almost everything about the appearance of the page. We can change the positions of these things. For example, instead of having this over here, we could put it over here if we wanted to. So we'll see how to do that um, as the course progresses. The reason, by the way, that I specified three fonts is, anyone have an idea why? Yeah. Yeah, in, ca in case the, the browser doesn't have one of the fonts. For example, Helvetica is a very popular font, but it's not on Windows machines. It's on Macintoshes and other platforms. Arial is sort of the Windows version of Helvetica. And then Sans Serif is just sort of a generic font. So. What the browser does is it looks in line, starting with the first until it finds one that it can use, and then, then it uses that one. All right. So someone had asked me, you know, can I, can I do more than what was asked for on, on the uh, uh, assignment? You absolutely can. So if you want to play with some of these extra CSS things, even though we haven't covered them in class, you know, go for it, have a blast. I'll, I'll do my best to answer whatever questions that, that you could run into. All right. So let's look again at these style rules a little more closely. We have the selector. And to start out, the first selectors we're going to look at are HTML tags. That means every HTML tag on the, on the page of this type gets a style rule. So every H1 gets a style rule. We put a tag, uh, a style rule for H2, then every H2. Now, later on, we'll learn how to be a little more specific and say maybe this H1 we want to treat differently. Um, but we, we, you know, we're, we're not going to we're not going to cover that right now. If anyone really uh, is interested, we can we can talk about it in lab. All right. Then we have within these 
curly brackets, pairs of the name of an attribute, in this case background, a colon, and then the value of the attribute, yellow. All right. Then we have a semicolon. Then we have the next, name of the attribute, colon, value. It always comes in pairs. We specify within these style rules, what is it that we want to change? A colon. What do we want to change it to? And then a semicolon. And then we put in the next part of the, the next attribute. So we can do that for as many attributes as we want. All right, we could have 15 things in a style rule to say to change the font, to change the position, to change the size of the, the type. All those sorts of things we can do uh, in one style rule. Any questions about this? Now, someone asked towards the end of class last time about d do we have to use just the names or can we use these things called hex codes? And I said we can use hex codes. All right. Let's spend a few minutes talking about this. And, and here's the good news about hex codes. That if you don't really understand, if you don't really follow the explanation, that's okay. Because there's a lot of charts on the web available that let you know what the hex code is for a particular color. So, you know, it, it is pretty useful. Let's look on Angel because I have a couple resources concerning colors. Let's take a look at them before we get on the uh, little discussion of what the hex codes look like. I think it's important for, for folks to know what those hex, co hex codes are. Again, have an idea of what they are, even if, even if they don't understand it 100%. Here's a list of all the color names that you can use. Again, courtesy W3 schools. And there's a lot of them. But there's actually a lot more colors than the ones that they have specified. Here's a color chart that shows us an air. Yeah. yeah, color chart. There we go. Oh. There we go. They must have changed the value of the link. All right. And you can see the color chart here. And this is what I mean about if you don't know the, if you don't really understand hex codes, you can still use them. Like, for example, this color is this code. All right. This color scheme generator will come to in, in a few minutes here. All right. But let's talk about what those hex codes represent. Um, and to do that, let, let's review a little bit of science. All right. If you take white light and shine it through a prism, you'll see it broken down into a spectrum of colors. All right. And if you did the reverse, you know, if you ran through beams of light back into a prison, prism, you'd come out with white light on the other end. All right. You actually don't need all the colors to do that. By mixing three colors, red, green, and blue, you can produce red, green, and blue light, that is. You can produce any color. Now, one thing that's a little bit different is if you're talking about like paints. There's different rules that apply for mixing those. This is talking about light. So let's imagine we were in a darkened room, all right, that had three projectors, all right, like those old big screen TVs had. I don't know if you've ever seen those. They, have, they, they essentially had three projectors, and I think they projected red, green, and blue, all right. So we, we're in a dark room. We have a screen, all right. And we're projecting three lights, a red, a green, and a blue. And they're all focused so they hit in the same spot. All right? So if we turned off the green and turned off the blue and shined the red light full blast, what color would the circle on the screen be? It would be red, right? Because we turned on the red full blast and turned the other ones off. All right? If we dim the red a little bit, 
it would be getting a darker and darker and darker shade of red. All right? We might be able to dim it so much that it's red, but it's almost hard to tell that it's red. It almost looks like, like black or a, a dark shade of gray. All right? Now, let's turn the red back up all the way. So it's back up all the way. Let's say we turn the blue on and turn it up all the way. What color do we have on the circle on the screen now? With red and blue turned up all the way. We have purple. All right. Now, if we turned the red down a little bit, we'd still have purple, but it would be more of a bluish shade of purple. All right. If we turn the red up all the way and turn the blue down, somewhat, it would be a reddish shade of purple. So we could get all kinds of different shades of purple by playing around, all right, and by, by turning those. And again, if we turn both of them down all the way, we'd get a very dark shade of purple that almost looked maybe like gray or black, all right. Hex codes are like those, those, um, those little controls that I'm describing here, all right. A hex code consists of a total of six digits. First of all, the hex codes start with a pound sign. That just lets the browser know that you're dealing with hex codes instead of color names. You then have six digits, which are broken up into three pairs. The first pair of digits consists of the value for the red. The second two, second pair, represent green. The third pair represent blue. RGB. Now, these aren't regular digits. These are what are called hexadecimal digits. Well, what's hexadecimal mean? It means instead of having the values 0 through 9, like we have in our regular number si uh, decimal number system, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, you know, like that, we have 0 through 15. All right? Total of 16 digits, 0 through 15. And A represents 11, B represents 12 in decimal, C represents 13, D represents 14, ah, A equals 10, sorry, something didn't seem right, E equals 14, and F equals 15. So the digits run from 0 through F. F is the highest digit, 0 is the lowest digit. So just like in our decimal system, 0 is the lowest digit, 9 is the highest. Well, 0 is the lowest, F is the highest. So we have these two that are kind of like you have a two-digit decimal number, where it's the tens and the ones. This is the sixteens and the ones. The bottom line is, is FF is the highest value that I can put in those two characters because I have the highest value in the left digit, the highest value in the right digit. That represents the highest value I can have. So, if I do this, that is red, right? Because the red is turned up all the way, and there's no green and there's no blue. All right? So, let's take a look at this in action. And this screen might look ugly for a while as I play around with these, with these hex codes, but, but we'll see. Um, hopefully we'll come to some good colors by the end of class today. So if I put in a background of FF0000, that's red full blast. That's what these two Fs mean. And no green and no blue mixed in. So if I go and save that and look at it, we're at a red 
red, a very deep, rich red. All right? If I make the blue turn full blast, that'll be a shade of purple, where the red and the blue are evenly balanced. Because I have full blast on the red, full, uh, full blast on the blue, and nothing on the green. So that's a shade of purple. Now, if I were to go and turn down the blue, again, 9-9 nine, nine is lower than FF, right, because 9 is a lower digit than F, we will see a redder shade of purple. Likewise, if we did the reverse, we'll see a bluer shade of purple. All right. Now, what do you suppose 6 F's is? 6 F's is to white. That, that's kind of like going the reverse through the prison. We have green light, red light, and blue light all shine together. That will give us white. If I do all zeros, the color is black. All right. What do you suppose I get if I do something like this? That will be a shade of gray, all right? Because the red, green, and blue are, are evenly matched. If the red, green, and blue are evenly matched, then it's on that continuum from black to white somewhere in there. So that will be a shade of gray. Now, if I make these higher numbers, if I make these A's, what will this shade of gray be compared to the previous gray? It'll be lighter because we're shining more light. We're shining more red, green, and blue. So it'll be a lighter shade of gray. And likewise, if we made the number smaller, this will be a darker shade of gray. Likewise, going back to our original example, that sort of full, full tilt red If we make the numbers a little lower, we get maybe a, a darker shade of red. Now, again, the good news is, is that if you don't really understand that, you can always just go and copy and paste the, the color code from the color chart. All right? But I do think it's important for you to have a sense of what these things are and how they work. Now, how do you pick out colors that match? Well, you know... We all know people whose, whose clothes go together perfectly, right? You look at their outfit and you say, wow, that, that shirt goes with that tie, goes with that jacket. You know, person is really dressed. You know other people that, that their, their colors clash quite a bit. And you look and say, wow, that's almost like an optical illusion, right? If you stare at them too long, you, they, they start vibrating, right? <laughs> now, that's a gift, right? Some people have it, some people don't. All right. The good news is, is that there's actually science to mixing the colors together. Right? There's actually science to what colors go together better. And therefore, we can make tools that show us and illustrate the rules and allow us to generate good-looking color combinations, even if we're not particularly good at matching colors ourselves. So, I hope this link still works. Let me go to Angel. I'm not going to count that one against because I, I, I hadn't even started to show anything. All right, so. All right, let's go to Angel and look.
color scheme generator. Yeah, at least I told you to move. All right. Now, here's how this color wheel works. First of all, on the top, up here, there's several styles that your colors can be. You know, this one is monochromatic, which means that all the colors will be some shade of a particular color. So we'll get all reds, for example, or all greens, or all blues, or all purples, or whatever. Here's complementary colors. Here's what are called triads. Tetrad, which means that there's four colors. Analogic, which colors that are close to each other. And accented analogic. I'm going to keep things simple and go with monochromatic. All right? Darn. Your mileage may vary. You can do whatever you want on yours, right? And for whatever reason, I'm going to pick a shade of blue today. And what you can do is actually, as you move the blue around, notice that the color palette over here changes. So, if I go too far, the blue becomes green. But if I go here, it's a nice sort of pale shade of blue. All right. Let's say, for the sake of argument, that I like these colors. All right, which there's nothing wrong with these colors. I can click this color list down here. All right, which might be very hard to read, but trust me, it says color list down here. And it'll show me the hex codes for those colors. All right. I can also adjust the scheme a little bit if I want to by maybe making it brighter or darker or whatever. And then I'll pick the color list. And now I can go, and what it has done is it's given me five colors that I can choose from to make the different things on my page those colors. What if you want more than five colors? Do it again is one answer. Yeah. Actually, I would say that's a trick question. You probably shouldn't use more than five colors on a web page, right? At least not too often. You don't want to bombard someone with a lot of everything, right? Colors can be used very effectively to create a mood on a web page, all right? To um, make the text more readable, to accent certain things, to give emphasis to certain things. So colors can be used to to really convey some meaning beyond just the fact that it looks good. All right? That being said, when you start to use too many colors, the effectiveness of the colors you use starts to go downhill. Right? If you can imagine, if I had a book, all right, or I had a block of text, and everything in the text was in black print, but there was one sentence that was in red, your eye would naturally go to that one sentence, right? And it would naturally see that. Now, if instead of that, if most of the text was black, but you had a line that was in red, and a line that was in yellow, and a line that was in green, you'd be distracted, and you really wouldn't know where to look. All right? So generally speaking, you want to avoid using too many colors. So I guess if you really had a good reason, you could always generate the color scheme and then play around adjusting it to get slightly different shades. That being said, um, I would wonder if you wanted too many, too many colors. All right, let's click on color list then, and let's start using these colors. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this, and that's a nice light color, so I'm going to make it the background of my web page. So I'll go here and I'll make the body of the page have a background of this. And the color, which again is the color of the text, I'll make black. That is one thing to, to, to remember, by the way. In addition to the colors that you're using, it, you're pretty well set to use black, white, and, and any shade of gray that you want. Yes? I need the number sign in front of it. Very good. All right, so let's go and do that. All right. 
Now I can go here and maybe for my H1s, I'll make the background color that. And the text color white. So let's save it and take a look at it. All right. That's a decent looking page. All right. Um, a lot better than when I was just, you know, sticking in color names off the names that I popped into my head or hex codes just, just to try it. So that's a pretty nice looking page. Again, the color further emphasizes that about me is a headline. All right. Um, it's readable. You know, one thing that you want to do uh, with, with your text is make sure that people can read it. You know, it doesn't matter how nice the colors look if the colors, when you put the text on top of the background, you're not able to read it. All right, so you want to make sure that um, it's readable. Um, it's not really clear the purpose of this web page. I'm assuming that it's meant to be like someone's personal web page, like a resume, an online resume, or something like that. And the color of blue is fairly, uh, fairly professional looking, I would say. All right. And we could go in and we can add some additional styles here. Maybe we'll do this for H2s. All right. Yeah, I don't know if I like that or not, but just gives a sense of what, what you're able to do. Now, one thing to note, by the way, is that links work sort of differently because links go by the browser default unless you put a style rule in there. So I'm going to go and I'm going to put a style rule in for the link. We will revisit this later because there's more to it than this, but I can go in and say a link. I want the, the color to be black. And maybe I'll make the font size 1.2M or yeah, 1.2M. 1.2M means like 20% bigger than normal. So that's what 1.2 means. 1M would be a normal size. 1.2M would be 1.2 times the normal size or 20% more. Again, it, it doesn't really matter at this point if you remember all this. Again, this is stuff that we'll learn throughout the term and you can see on the W3 schools site if you want to play around with that. So notice that now that made the background color of this black and notice that the text of the link is slightly bigger than the, 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 than the text surrounding it. All right. Now, once instantly when I introduce this, I have to go into a little speech about design and proper web design, right? Um, to quote Spider-Man, right? With great power comes great responsibility. All right. You now have the ability to make everything on the page a different color. Wow. <laughs> you know. That, if you did that though, that probably would not make for a very good looking web page. All right. Remember the, the point of using colors. The point of using colors is to set a mood and to emphasize certain things. Again, if you blast people with a whole bunch of different colors, you're not emphasizing anything. You're just distracting them and, 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 and you're not really pointing their attention anywhere. 
I guess the way that, that uh, another analogy to, to say, uh, and another way I see it is, is like going to an all-you-can-eat buffet, right? You go to an all-you-can-eat buffet, the temptation is to literally eat all that you can eat, right? All you can physically eat before you pass out or explode or whatever, right? Avoid that temptation, all right, with these, with the style rules, especially with the colors, all right? Use the colors judiciously and, and use them to really emphasize and to make a point, all right? The colors really can help the, the user to organize your page at a glance. I could take off my glasses and believe me, I can't read hardly any of the text up there with my glasses off and yet I get a sense of how this page is organized simply because the coloring involved and the colors are used to sort of split the page into sections and so on and so forth. So you can give your users information about your page at a glance simply by using colors and you can emphasize things by using colors and so on. In addition, you can do it to make your page look good and to make your page create a certain mood. For example, you know, go to a website for, let's say, a heavy metal band. All right? What color do you suppose the background is going to be for this? Yeah, I, I, you, you name a heavy metal band, chances are the background color is going to be black. All right? You're not going to go and see a, a page with a pink background color for a heavy metal band. Not likely. All right? Now, the reverse, you know, if you went to a, a website for Barbie, chances are the color would be pink, right? Because it's trying to create a mood. So there's a lot of purposes for using uh, colors. What I'm telling you is, is make your choices deliberately, all right, and, and apply good judgment when you make um, those decisions as far as, as what colors you want to use. Are there any questions on this? Yes. How do you make something tab over on the web page? How do you make something tab over? Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. How do I indent that? Uh, yeah, we, we will talk about that in, in gory detail. Uh, about week, I don't know, about week six, seven, somewhere in there. But for now, what we can do is we can say something like this. Let's say I want my paragraph to indent. All right. I could say P margin dash left. And then I could put in something like 200 pixels. And now when we view that, notice that paragraph is now indented a little bit. Now, We'll spend tons of time talking about that, all right? Uh, we'll, we'll spend a lot of time talking about how to achieve a layout. So, um, again, this is just sort of the very quick and dirty answer to the question. We'll, as the course goes on, we'll, we'll go in a lot more detail about this. Other questions? All right, let's see what to talk about. Ah, one tag that we didn't talk about last time that can be effective uh, are the tags for lists. If I have a list of items, all right? Remember, if I do something like this, let's say in the hobby section, I wanted to put photography reading, video games. Is that going to appear like a neat little list? No. Why not? Because again, the way that the browser handles white space. Even though they're on their own line, they're not going to appear on their own line. So if I go and look at this, sure enough, they just appear in a straight line at the, uh, at the bottom. I can, however, make them into a list by using a list tag. And there's two kinds of lists. There is unordered, which is the first one that we're looking at. And there are ordered lists.
Now, an unordered list is where the order doesn't really matter. In other words, if I'm listing my hobbies, it doesn't really matter what order I list them in, right? I'm not implying that one of them is my favorite hobby and one of them is my second favorite hobby and, or one of them is the one I spend the most time on or whatever. I'm just saying, hey, these are some of the things I'm interested in. So I would say an unordered list might be appropriate for that. Therefore, I have a start UL tag which indicates, hey, this is the start of my list. I have an end UL that indicates, hey, this is the end of my list. I then have LI tags for list items for each of my items. So now when I go and view this, they're in a nice little bulleted list. All right. Now, I could put anything in there, right? I could put a section, uh, a, a set of links in there. In other words, I could put a link to a page about photography, a link to a page about literature, a link to a page about video games. So don't let the fact that I just put words in there think that that's the only thing you can do. You can put anything in there. Yes? I assume that in the CSS style you can change, like instead of having a circle, you can put like a uh, greater than sign or something. Exactly. Uh, the question was, is can I change it instead of having the bullet point like that is a little circle. Can I change it to something else? And you absolutely can. And again, the question is, is how would I change it? That's an aspect of the appearance of the page. Therefore, I would change it somehow in CSS. So we could look quickly at W3Schools. Look under CSS. Look for lists. And you will see that I could make ah, I could make it a square, I could make it a circle, I could actually use an image of my own for that. Now I won't go and do that, but again, um, if you're interested in it, you can try it. Now the other kind of list is an ordered list which is the same as the unordered list, except instead of a UL as an OL. All right. An ordered list would be where the, the sequence mattered. You know, if I was listing the steps in a recipe, I'd use an ordered list, right? Because it matters that you first crack the egg and then you put it in the bowl, as opposed to putting it in the bowl and then cracking it. All right. So that's, an, that, that's where the sequence matters. Or if I was ranking, let's say in sports, you know, uh, you know the, uh, the, the, the AFC Central Division or something, if there even is such a thing anymore, all right? And I was ranking them in order. It would show, you know, one, two, three, four. You know, I would want to use an ordered list. Really, the only difference is, is that it will show, instead of by default showing a little bullet point, it will show a number next to it. And again, through our CSS, we can actually make that uh, Roman numeral if we would prefer. All right. Really, for the rest, yes. No, no, they'll be in that order. Okay. All right. Um, and it's a very subtle point, but when you create an unordered list. You know, you're saying, hey, the sequence of these don't really matter that much. It's not like it's going to shuffle them and put them in a different order uh, from time to time. You know, uh, essentially, the idea is do you want it to be a numbered list or a bulleted list? And if you want it to be a bulleted list, then the order doesn't really matter as much, so you make it a, a, an unordered list. If you want it to be a numbered list, then the order does matter, in which case you make it an ordered list. Now, for the rest of the term, we're going to sort of be working in parallel HTML and CSS. We'll do something in one, we'll do something in another. All right. We still have a fair number of tags to talk about in terms of images. Uh, will be the next big one that we'll probably talk about. I'll have to look through my notes um, to see if there's anything else. But the interesting thing is, is if you go out on the web, there's a lot of websites that aren't that much more complicated than this, right? Especially some old school websites. 
Um, if you go to calculus.org, what is this? There's some H1s, there's some links, probably some H2s and H3s, and there is a set of ordered lists, or oh, I'm sorry, unordered lists that contain a link and contain a paragraph underneath it. If we were to look at this, this would be a list item that would contain a link and would contain a paragraph. So your list items don't just have to be a word or a sentence or a phrase, it can, it can contain uh, a bunch of HTML. All right. Through CSS then, we can really style this up to make it look uh, a lot better, a lot more involved uh, than, than, uh, than this presentation. All right, we'll see you over in lab.